Hey, my name is Stan Freitas. I'm blessed to be the pastor of Hope Church in Paradise. We welcome to our worship celebration. If you're a member of Hope, we miss you and we love connecting with you each week. And thank you for uh, being a part of our broadcast. If you're a member of another church, we pray for you and for your church. Uh, for it to get back to meeting and for health and prosperity. We also pray for anyone who's watching that's not a member of a church and this whole Jesus thing, maybe it's new to you and you're just checking it out. You're our special guest. And here's what you can expect. We'll have a couple songs. We'll have a message of encouragement and a couple more songs. And uh, thank you for, for being a part of this. Let's get started. God bless. Good morning, Hope family, friends and visitors alike. Welcome to our living room, and thanks for joining us. As we worship this morning in our respective places, uh, I just wanted to remind you that worship is connection with God. Worship is a way to express our love. Uh, it's good for our hearts. It's good for our minds. It reminds us, and, and just know that it doesn't matter how many people you have with you. It doesn't matter where you are. God hears you. God is much bigger than our distance, and God is bigger than our fears. And as we sing to him today, he hears us. Oh, 
worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Yes, I worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. Amen. Good morning, Hope. We love and we miss you so much. And I wish I could give you guys all hugs, but right now I'm sending all the virtual hugs I can give. Um, and we just hope and pray that you enjoy this worship, and I'm happy that you guys are all safe in your homes, and that things are hopefully going to be getting better soon, so we can actually meet in person and give all the hugs we want. I love you. <laughs>
love you all so much. Hey, Hope Church, are you glad to be here today at our online service? We thank you for joining us. We're so glad that you're here. We feel so blessed that we have people joining us every week. People are part of Hope Church and people who are friends in other places. We want to wish everyone a happy Memorial Weekend. And uh, thank you for making part of your uh, weekend uh, worshiping God. Do you ever feel stuck? Do you ever feel like you can't move from where you are to where you would like to be? As followers of Jesus, we're called all the time to keep progressing, to keep growing. We're all on a spiritual journey all the days of our life. And we change at different phases of our life, things that we may do, but we're all called to follow and continue to grow all our life until ultimately we go to be with the Lord. We're called to take these steps in our spiritual journey. And then we have obstacles along the way, challenges, and sometimes we can feel stuck. Our series title is God's Promises, and we're looking at different promises from God every week because we are dealing with some uncertainty right now with COVID-19 and with the challenges going on in the world, the health issues, the finance issues all the, the different changes. And so we want to look at something we can count on. Last week, we learned about Joshua, and we're going to continue with Joshua today. Joshua served as a young man we saw last week with Moses. He stayed in the tent. He loved to be around God and part of God. He was a warrior uh, from a young man, a person of faith, and now an older man. He's called to lead as Moses dies Joshua is called to be the leader. All great leaders are first great followers. And the truth is, uh, we're called to, to be a follower all our life and be a learner all our life, even if we're in, in a leadership position. Imagine uh, he, being given the job of Moses. Your job description says you're doing Moses' job. You've got 2.4 million people of Israel to lead into the promised land. Can you imagine that? God is giving the Israelites this promised land. The word promise comes from way back from Abraham in Genesis. You read the story of Abraham through whom the Jewish nation came uh, through, the father of the Jewish nation, and God says he's going to give him a physical promised land. That's where ultimately Jerusalem is and uh, the promised land that they're going to enter uh, in the time of Joshua that we're reading today. And then um, ultimately all nations would be blessed as Jesus would come through Abraham's family tree. And then everyone can be a part of the spiritual blessings. And we have a spiritual promised land a uh, new home. We go to ultimately to heaven, the new Jerusalem, the new earth. We're, we live forever with God. And, but during this age, we're in this journey on this earth. Why would God allow his people in the Old Testament to go in and fight their way to get this promised land? Why does he allow killing and warfare is a question that's asked a lot. People say, hey, you got this loving God, and why would a loving God allow this bloodshed to go on? And, and a brief answer would be, there are some things worse than dying. That's dying uh, apart from the God of heaven. And the nations had evolved into having all kinds of gods, I believe little g gods, that they made with their own hands and they worshiped with immoral practices or harmful practices. And God's this loving God, the God of Israel in the Old Testament. He's the creator God, that we're all created to live to his glory, but he's a loving God. He wants us to express love to him and worship. He's a promise keeper. He's a way maker. He's a covenant God. He makes a covenant with his people, and he's always faithful. And in the Old Testament, that's a covenant where he shows what sin is and the law, and it also shows our need for, for grace because we can't keep it perfectly. And then it leads us to Jesus where we have a new covenant by faith. We're saved by grace. And in the New Testament, we have this spiritual warfare where we're against 
uh, Satan and demons, and we go through uh, difficult circumstances in this fallen world, uh, but we have a mission to bring him glory, and constantly we're called to progress and grow until we go to the next world in heaven to be with the Lord forever. So we, like Joshua, are given a task, and we have commands, and we have promises, and today we go to our seventh promise, and it's actually a twofer week. I'm going to give you two promises today in our seventh week from Joshua 1, verses 8 through 9, which read, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be wherever with you wherever you go. You've got the command. Rick Warren talks about the premise and the promise when, in one of our series that we did, recently did. And the premise here is there to keep the law and meditate on it and be careful to follow it. And the promise is they'll be prosperous and successful. And the next one, he commands them to be strong and courageous, to not give in to fear or discouragement. And the promise is God will be with you wherever you go. So today, we're going to look at three action steps, actually from uh, chapter one of, of Joshua. And, and so we'll take in the verses uh, preceding our promise for today, verses before eight and nine, and then after. So we begin in verse one of Joshua one, where it says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to you, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to the Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So there's three action steps we're going to look at from this text that Joshua needed to make, and I believe we're called to take in our lives. The first one is you got to accept what God has for you. Accept what God has for you. Joshua is now older. He knows of the weaknesses of the Israelites and the things that he saw Moses deal with, that they could be faithless at times, and they could be grumblers and complainers. And Moses is dead, and he has this big challenge to accept. And God says to him in verse 2, you and all these people, get ready. Get ready. You know, they have an untamed challenge. They're going to cross the Jordan. He says, get ready to cross the Jordan River. When you go to the third chapter of Joshua, where it tells about when they cross it, it says the Jordan was at flood stage. It would have been easier if God told them to cross when the weather is dry and when the river is low. Sometimes God calls us to do things that are not the easy way. And so they have this untamed challenge to cross. When you read about it, when they do cross it, they have to follow God's leading. The priests are in front carrying the Ark of the Covenant, which is 
uh, the presence of God, and they're following God's leadership, and the priests have to step into the water before he parts the Jordan. You got to step out in faith sometimes before God gives you the blessing, the untamed challenge. And then there's the unknown challenge. He says, into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. He mentions the territory that they're going to, uh, from the desert to the Lebanon, from the great river Euphrates, and he calls it the Hittite country. The Hittites were one of seven nations of Canaan. Canaan's land is what the whole land was called. Some of us grew up singing songs like to Canaan's land, I'm on my way. And, and ultimately, spiritually, Christians believe we're going to the, the spiritual promised land. God is leading us. The Hittite country, those used here generally, uh, as he, he picks one out of all the nations, he picks a dominant tribe. This tribe included the Anakim. The Anakim were the giants in the land. God says, I'm sending you on an untamed challenge to cross the Jordan at the flood season and an unknown challenge to take over a territory and to go where you've never been. And there's a land with giants there. They are superior tribe. They're your most formidable opposition in the whole place. I want to emphasize, except what God has for you. Because God is a difference maker, and no matter how big the challenge is, if God's in it, then we're okay. And he says, I, verse 3, I will give you every place where you set your foot. You know, that's one of the greatest realizations in life, that you, when we begin to understand that every place place we set our foot God has given us even if we use a gift it's no glory to us God gave us our gifts we have skills we have abilities everything we have God has given to us we came into this world naked and we leave naked and he promises to work for him he says I've given it to you and uh, Joshua's job is to trust. You know, in the history of the Old Testament and the New Testament, God's people are always called to accept challenges. No matter how big they are, they're called to accept what the task is that they have. I want to read 10 names and see if you can recognize them. See if you can remember any Bible story with these names. First one is Shamua. That's not Shamu, the whale. It's Shamua. Then there's Shaphat and Igal and Palti and Gadiel and Gadi and Amiel, Sether, Nabi, and Gul. Anybody recognize those names? There may be some Bible scholar out there that goes, yeah, I know who that was or this one was, but most of us probably we don't recall much about those names. Now, here's two more names to see if you recognize. Joshua and Caleb. Most people recognize the names Joshua and Caleb, the leader we're studying about today. And Joshua and Caleb were two of the 12 spies who believed God. The other 10 that I read to you said, we can't go in the land. Yeah, it's a great land. It's flowing with milk and honey. It's got great harvests and a lot can be accomplished, but the cities are fortified and walled and there's giants there and they had the grasshopper complex. They said, we're like grasshopper in their eyes and in our own. And so they were afraid. And so they never made it in the promised land. And a whole generation wandered around in the wilderness because they were faithless. Only two in that generation entered the promised land, Joshua and Caleb. One of my favorite stories in Joshua is in chapter 15, when Caleb shows up. They are dividing the land of the Israelites. They're taking different parts, and Caleb walks up, and he says, you remember what God said to us, how he would provide uh, if we trusted in him, and God did. And you remember, I, you and I, he said, I served God wholeheartedly. That's what it says in Scripture, Numbers 13 and 14, that Caleb served God wholeheartedly, both Joshua and Caleb. And, and he's, he says, I'm 85 now, so get, I'm still ready to fight, and I want you to give me this hill country. He picks the Anakims. 
He picks the land. This 85-year-old warrior says, I want the one with the giants in it. And I can just see uh, Joshua shaking his head and, and, and smiling. Man, you're something else. And so the stories of Joshua and Caleb, Caleb goes on to take the land. He accepts what God has for him and serves God wholeheartedly, and he's successful. you got to accept what God has for you. Well, how do I know if it's something God has for me? Well, sometimes God allows circumstances in our life. God is sovereign, but he allows circumstances in our life, there can be trials and tests. They can turn around to become great opportunities. If we're followers of Jesus, we have an overarching purpose in life to bring glory to God, the one who made us, to reflect the life and teaching of Jesus because he, was, he came from heaven to show us how God wanted us to live. And, and he shows us that regardless of our circumstances, we still live to the glory of God. Jesus went through some tremendous difficulty difficult circumstances of course ultimately the cross for us and he overcame death with the empty tomb now god i don't believe causes the wicked hurts in this life but i believe sometimes he allows them and he can take uh, the things that are hard and, and hurt and he can turn it around and do something good and beautiful but we've got to accept the challenge no matter how big it is, to bring glory to God. And God has blessings ahead for those who accept it. I believe those who don't accept the challenge, they miss out on the blessing. God has blessings ahead for you, but you have to accept the challenge. Untamed and unknown, the Jordan and the Hittite country, the giants. We honor God when we trust him in hard times, untamed. Everyone faces untamed situations in life. God wants us to walk across the river and face the giants. God reveals his power best in times of great challenge. You know, you have two people that basically turned on Jesus. The first one was Judas. The second one was Peter. Peter denied him. Judas went out and took his life sadly and tragically. Peter didn't. Peter repented and he turned back. It was like he said, you know, I'm not giving up even though we're going through this tough time. Uh, I, I, I'm going to stick around and see what ha God has. I feel that way after the campfire. I feel that way uh, now with COVID that God has something for us. We have to accept what God has for us and follow him. And God reveals his power best in times of great challenge. Unknown. They were preparing to walk where they had never walked into a land of unknown. A brand new generation of people. Nobody knows what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. But we don't know. It's unknown. Every day we face the new and the unknown. Too many people fear the unknown, so they settle for the problems instead of accepting and facing the challenges. We get stuck. We're afraid because things didn't turn out like we thought, and so we get stuck and accept our problem life instead of facing the challenge and following God into the unknown territory. You know what happens when you follow God into the unknown territory? It creates a dependency on him because you don't know what's going on or what's going to happen. And you don't have the power to, to turn things around or make it work like you want it to work. But God does. And when we depend on him, he leads us to victory. So first action step is to accept what God has for you. Number two, rely on God's power and presence. Rely on God's power and presence. In verse 3, God says to Joshua, I will give you every place where you set your foot. He says, I will give you. You don't earn it. God gives you every place where you set your foot. 
Verse five, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. We have this personal power from God. And someone might say, well, that's Joshua and that's Old Testament. I believe in Christ. We who are followers of Jesus today have this personal power and his presence. When Jesus gave the great commission to go make disciples in Matthew 28, he said, for I am with you always to the very end of the age. So that's something I can know. I love when there's places in scripture, I can know that I know. And he says, if I'm making disciples, if I'm reaching out, if I'm sharing Jesus, I can know Jesus is with me to the very end of the age. And he gives us his presence and his powers. One of his apostles, Paul, apostles of Jesus, who wrote much of the New Testament and planted churches in the Roman Empire, great missionary who went from a persecutor to proclaimer and apostle of Jesus. He wrote this to a church in Ephesus, to Christians in Ephesus in the Roman Empire in Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power. Everybody say that. Say that right now in your home or in your chair or wherever you are. Say that. In, you can say it silently if you don't want to say it out loud. His power. His power. That is at work within us. Now say that within us. Within us. His power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church. You see how much God loves the church? He uses the church to bring glory. To him be the glory in the church. God is glorified through us being sons and daughters, brothers and sisters in his church, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Point number one, we accept what God has for us. Point number two, we rely on his power and his presence as we march ahead into the untamed and the unknown. He promises to provide the power and his presence as we walk into the untamed and unknown. But we've got to accept and we've got to rely. If I'm falling apart and I'm complaining and I'm helpless and I'm discouraged, and I'm giving in to fear. I know all those things are, are tempting and unknown and untamed experiences. You're a human being. I'm not judging anyone, any of us. I deal with those too, but we can't give in to them. If we choose not to give them and we accept and we rely, God takes us into the promised land. Number three, he says, follow God's word. You got to accept, you got to rely, and you got to follow. He says in verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law. So there's completeness, all the law. My servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. I want to be successful. I don't know about you. I want to be successful. And he tells me twice in, this, in these verses, how to be successful. In verse 8, which is part of our promise for this week, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything in it, written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. There's those words again. Then you will be prosperous and successful. You shouldn't feel bad about wanting to be prosperous and successful. I'm sorry, but being a Christian doesn't mean we go around and say, oh, I'm not supposed to want anything. I'm not supposed to have any ambition or desire. I'm just a good little Christian. No, it's okay for us to want to be prosperous and to be successful. You show me a good loser, I'll show you a loser. Whoever says it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, but how you play the game must have lost all the time. It's a whole lot better to win, and it's not true winning unless it's winning with God and for God. He says in verse 9, have I not commanded you? He's like, do you know who you're talking to? Do you know who's giving this command? 
It's me, your creator, the God of heaven. I'm not a man. I'm not an angel. This is God. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Oh, those words make me tremble. Sometimes I want to be afraid because of the untamed and the unknown. But if I read scripture, I, I have to make a decision. Am I going to give in and give away to fear and discouragement, or am I going to follow God's word? He says, I'm commanding you. You know, in the Old Testament, you have the law and the prophets. You have poetry and wisdom, daily living, so much to gain from reading the Old Testament. Those things are there for our learning, and there was a covenant with the law, but we couldn't keep the law. We learned about sin through the law, the Torah, and that led us to our need for grace when Jesus came and brought us grace, and we have a new covenant in his blood for the forgiveness of sins through his body and through his blood given on the cross, and the resurrection proved that he was who he says he is. And so we have hope in this new covenant. So the Old Testament is good for our learning, for our history. We learn about God and how God works out his plan. New Testament, we're part of that new um, covenant. He says, be careful to obey all. He wants us to be complete and consistent in our obedience in following the word. So that means you got to read it. Some of us have Bible apps. You can get daily devotionals every day and read a daily devotional. My wife and I have a calendar from a Jesus calling that we read every day. You can get reading schedules from Bible apps, or you can just Google Bible reading schedules and get different types of schedules. You can listen to the Bible and, and find recorded Bible. Um, you can read the one-year Bible where they divide it up enough for you to read with some Old Testament, some New Testament, some um, Proverbs and Psalms every day. Psalms are great books of devotion, having a heart for God, and Proverbs are great wisdom for everyday life. In fact, there's one for every day of the month. You can read chronological Bible where people have done works to kind of arrange it chronologically. I got to say something here because I think it's always been this way in my ministry, but I think it's gotten worse, where people say they think you can't really understand the Bible, or they, they don't want to study it for themselves. They want the professionals to tell them what it says, and you and I need to be self-feeders if we're going to make it. You know what I tell people going in the ministry? You got to have a love affair with the Word of God. If you don't have a love affair with the word of God, you're not going to make it. You say, well, I love to preach. I don't care if you love to preach. Do you love people? Do you love God? Are you in love with his word? Because there's going to be times you go home and you feel so alone. And you have to ask yourself, did I try to share the word of God? And if you did, you know, you did all right. Because that's what it's about. And you can understand the Bible. When I went to ministry, I thought I'd done so much drugs and stuff. I, I won't be able to memorize it. I won't be able to learn it. I found out I can learn it. And I know the book of, of God's word, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. I memorized the books and I memorized the verses and I studied the original language and I was blown away. I can learn it. And I haven't learned it all. All our life we learn. It's like the ocean. You can twinkle your finger, your toes, or you can go over your head. And there'll be questions when we go to heaven uh, to be with the Lord about what he meant about this or that. But the things that are really important, daily living, our work. Uh, integrity, how we deal with our neighbors, our family. God has made, not made those so hard that we can't understand. And Satan uses a smokescreen in our ADD culture to say, well, I can't really understand it. I don't really. No, you're being lazy because there are so many tools. I believe everyone who has a brain that functions properly can come to learn the word of God. And just reading it will bless your life. Memorizing it will bless your life. You can do topical studies. You can Google on the internet. It's easier now. Yeah, you got to be careful of wackos, but it's easier. When I began the ministry, we had to buy commentaries and buy books. And now you can Google on the internet and get those same commentaries. And you, you can say, what is the gospel? And you can find articles about what the gospel is. What is the story of the Israelites? What's the promise to Abraham? You've got to be 
a self feeder. Why? What, the reason I don't feel bad challenging everyone who hears my voice today to do that is you will be prosperous and you will be successful. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in others. I believe it with all my heart now that I'm an old man, that God's words of Joshua are just as true to you and me today. And I see people going through a lot of heartache because they do the opposite. They go by what they think or what they feel or some human being tells them instead of following the words of God. Keep this book of the law always on your lips, he says. That means memorize it. That means you know, uh, he says, meditate on it, verse 9. I like the word marinade, you know, just kind of marinade in the word of God. Listen to the promises that we've gone through just in this, uh, in this series. As you think about meditating on God's, what it will do for your psyche, for your mind, for your, for your um, outlook on life, if you marinate and meditate on these um, passages like this. The first one we had was promise one from uh, John 16, where Jesus said to the apostles after the resurrection, he says, so also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. I love that I can have a joy that no one can take away because of the empty tomb. Promise two from Isaiah 41, 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Psalm 9, 9 and 10. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 9, 9 and 10. In. Matthew 11, 28, 30, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Deuteronomy 5, 16, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God has given you. Promise 6, Deuteronomy 31, 8, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And today, promise 7, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Oh man, if we would feed on the word, we'd be so different when others are complaining and they'll make fun of you. Oh, you're just it's your personality or you're just an optimist. Or you're just, no, I'm, I'm just full of the word of God. Oh, but this is this is all, all positive thinking. No, no, no. I, I can't do it on my own self. I'm I, I'm wicked in my own heart, and my mind, and my selfish thoughts. But God's word won't let me be negative. He, he won't let me have negative thinking. And he he promises over and over, you'll be successful. He says, be careful to obey, so that you may be careful to do everything in it. Verse eight. They're told to go to Jericho to walk around it six times, to have their priest blow trumpets. On the seventh day, they're told to walk around seven times and then blow the trumpets. Now imagine you're, you're up on the wall, you're a guard, and you see these Israelites coming out and they're walking around your city, around this huge massive wall, historically massive wall of Jericho. Second day, here they come. Third day, here they come. Oh, here comes the Israelites for their morning walk. <laughs> they look like fools to the world. Day six, ah, ah, ah. Day seven, they do it seven times. They obey God's word, and the walls come tumbling down. That's when you see God work. When you obey God's work against your culture and everybody else is making fun of you, and you still obey God, that's when he shows up the most. Then after that conquest, great victory time, Achan disobeys God. One of the Israelites takes stuff for himself, and they weren't supposed to do that, and they suffer consequences. God says, don't turn to the right. 
Don't turn to the left. It doesn't matter what people believe. It doesn't matter what people say. It's what God says that leads to be prosperous and success. To us who are followers of Jesus, we're told to love God and love people. We're told we're called to be a member of God's family, that we belong there. When we put our faith in Jesus, we become a part of membership in God's family, and we were all made for that. And we have to accept that to be a part of that, to believe, to be baptized. You know, it's not about, well, I don't know why we need to do it. It doesn't matter what I know. God said, believe and be baptized and learn everything I commanded you. So all our life, we're learners to keep worshiping, expressing love. That's a part of your lifestyle in a, in a world of uncertainty, untamed, and all the troubles. One of the greatest things you can do is get on Facebook and argue with people. Oh, wait, no, no, that's not what I meant. What I meant to say was one of the greatest things I can do is worship my God. Even when they made it illegal, Daniel would not stop worshiping his God. And people don't understand, or they may put you down, but you will, in God's time, be prosperous and successful. I promise you that. I've seen it. And there'll be things that aren't good that you don't enjoy, but God never wastes a hurt. He calls us to love, even when people are unloving. He calls us to forgive, but it's not fair. I shouldn't forgive them. It's not fair. No, life is not fair. But the gospel of Christ shines through you when you let someone go. And when you forgive them, you set a captive free, and that captive is yourself. God says, don't worry. It doesn't make sense not to worry, God. Do you realize what's going on here? Oh, yeah, you are God. And he says, it's not good for you. It's not healthy for you to stand to worry yourself sick. So let it go. And trust me, accept, rely, follow. I was taught by a great teacher to look for reoccurring words when I study a book or a context, because if I see reoccurring words or sentences, the Holy Spirit is making an emphasis. He's saying this is important. Listen to these three verses, verse 6, verse 7, verse 9. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God loves you so much. He wants you and I to live without fear today. To not give in. It's just human to be tempted to be afraid. And we have to look to God instead of the giants. Instead of the untamed and the unknown challenge, we look to God. He knows what's ahead. We don't, but he does. One, another one of my favorite stories in Joshua is Rahab. She was a prostitute. But she saw something special in the God of Israel. When the spies came to check out her city, she hid them, protected them, and helped them with defeating her city. She went on to marry into the tribe of Judah. That's the tribe of Jesus. In the lineage of Matthew, she's in that family tree. That's one of the things I love about the lineage of Jesus. There's all kinds of sinners that become redeemed by God and are in Jesus's family tree. That means your family and my family has hope. He came for everyone. But we all have to step out in faith. We all have to, to do like she did. She accepted, she relied, and she followed God. Memorial Day has always been a favorite weekend to me for barbecue. But the older I get, the more special it's gotten to me to think about that I'm so blessed to live where I live because people lay down their lives. Warriors, some lay down and give the ultimate price. Others are hurt or injured for the rest of their life. They're never the same. And families are hurt for the cause of freedom. And there's a verse in the Bible where it says, greater love has no man than this, than one who lays down his life for his friends. And Jesus Christ laid down his life for every one of us. And we have untamed 
And we have uncertain, unknown challenges ahead of us, but we have a God who goes with us and ahead of us. So we'll, how will you respond today? Will you accept what God has for you? If you want to do that, you can say that right now it, it, to yourself. You can just say it silently. I accept what you have for me, God. Will you rely on God's power and presence instead of your own? Just say right now, God, I am going to rely on your power and your presence. Will you follow his word? Will you commit today and just say, God, I am going to follow your word. Listen one more time to today's promise. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will be with you wherever you go. I hope God blesses you with this message today. He's got something for you. He shows up when we go into the unknown and the uncertain, the untamed, and we trust him. He has blessings for you ahead. Let's pray. Father, thank you. It's, it's, it makes me tremble to read your words and to, to try to be so positive, but that's how your word is. It won't let me back off. And your word is positive. And God, I'm speaking to people that are dealing with things that are unprecedented, we've never dealt with before. We're going where we've never gone. We're not sure how things are going to work out. And so we look to you, God, our creator. And we know that you are sovereign. So you've allowed these circumstances. And so we accept what you have for us in our life as disciples of Jesus to live to your glory, to endure, to be courageous. We will not give in fear. When we're tempted to be afraid, we're going to rely on your power and the fact that you are present with us right now. And we commit to follow your word, God, in order to be prosperous and successful to your glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Hope Church. I just wanted to pray for everybody real quick right now and let you all know that I miss you very much and that um, I hope that this time that we're spending apart allows you to build a more intimate relationship with God and that as I sing this song that you guys feel that and that you guys all just have a moment of worship while we're at home and apart. Victory in this 
Love you, Hope. Uprising uh, for leaving us in some great music and worship today. Hey, you know, uh, I know the word's out that they're talking about when the church is going to get back together physically, and we are researching all that. Um, we're, we're not going to uh, impulsively do anything quick until we've studied everything. You know, you got to look at things like the CDC requirements. Does that mean we all get together with face masks? And then secondly, well, if we have to practice six feet, we don't have enough room in our building for everybody. So do we go to two services? Um, so there's a whole lot of questions. And so I promise you we're researching that and learning, talking to other church leaders, seeing what others are doing. And we are calm and trusting in God. We're going to continue our broadcast until we're ready to, to let everybody know. Let's get back on our facility as well. And we'll still do our broadcast for those who are in other places. That's been one of the good things that have come out of this time. Uh, um, also, I want to thank everybody who's been giving and continuing to tithe. Some have started giving online that weren't before. If you'd like to give online, you can do that at hopechurch.com, hopechurchparadise.com. Look for the link that says give, click on that, and you can give it's very easily on, online. You can mail to Hope Christian Church Paradise. Box 397, Paradise, California, 95967. Or if you want to go to our physical address, 14126 Skyway in Magalia, there's a mail slot, a drop box on the right side as you face the front of the building. And um, our uh, treasure, Kim, will get that. Thank you all. You're making us a force. God is working through you to make us a force in, on the ridge and beyond that's bringing God's glory. So now it's time to pray for our offering. Yay! Let's pray. God, we celebrate giving. It's all yours anyway, and you are blessing us in so many ways. And Lord, uh, take this, make us a force of hope on the ridge and beyond. Bring people hope and lift their spirits. And I pray that even during this time of difficulty, your church will grow. People will be drawn to you to find that love and that hope and that support. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, before our final song, what is our purpose? Building relationships that last forever. How do we do that? Love God and love people. So remember every single day this week, in Christ, we always have hope. God bless. Thanks for being here. Hey, Hope family, it's been so great to know that you're all out there watching with us today. And I just want to remind you that God is bigger and greater than any and all of our circumstances. And whether we stand in the valley or we stand on the mountaintop, he is always worthy of our praise.
this week. Don't be lonely. Don't isolate yourselves. There are ways that we can be in touch. So email us, Facebook message us, text us, call us. We are here for you and we love you. And together as a team this morning, we would like to tell you goodbye and how much we love you. So everybody win. Say goodbye. Bye. 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 I love you guys. Love you. Hope. Love you. Love you. Love you. So much love. Wait to